Are you going places or left behind because you don't have a travel companion? Listen to how you can travel more independently. Dr. Travel Best will bring you the best answers, tips and her mistakes so you can benefit. Welcome to Dr. Mary Travel Best's Bucket List Travel. We share the travel tips and guide you sharing our missteps along the way. It's for women who travel, who want to travel, and especially for those who want to travel independently. That's you. Let's keep going. What's on your bucket list? Please share that with me via the social media or my blog or any way you like. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm going to talk about your questions, your special individual travel questions, because many of you have the same questions. I also want to share some of my mistakes and missteps in travel because I've made just about every mistake so you don't have to. I wrote the world's first guide to independent travel and published it in 1993. And since then, I've been running a business, raising four children with my husband and been a professor at several universities all the time traveling and making many mistakes along the way. So my travel experiences are rich and meaningful and I want to share them with other women like you so you get it right. So here's what I'll be talking about today. The first question I'm going to be talking about is fear of airline travel. And then we will talk further about today's mistake. Then we'll get into what resources are there, travel advice, things like where to stay. And then we'll talk about a destination. And today's destination is Bangkok, Thailand. So let's begin with the frequently asked question, I am fearful of airline travel. What should I do about that? I really understand that you have a fear and it is a real one. Now, I'm assuming that you have exhausted a few of your initial opportunities to overcome that. So let me help you try to build your travel confidence. I also was fearful of travel and may be very different from yours, but I took one step at a time just one step at a time and made it. And if you're afraid, you do need to address that fear. You could practice like with any skill and you can also talk to trusted advisors about it. There are several professionals who you could call and discuss with this one-on-one. But let's talk about just the general fear of travel and talk about being away from home. If you want to take a different perspective, home can really be within ourselves. By that, I mean that when you are somewhere else and you look inside yourself and feel good about yourself, you can almost feel like you're home. Now, there's lots of books out there. I found one called The Gift of Fear by Simon De Becker, and that tells you to trust your gut. If your gut tells you something's not right, maybe you should listen to it. Maybe that, you know, maybe there's something that you have done before that makes you a little uneasy about that particular environment. But I do also want you to think about the art of possibility. And I want you to think about what's on the other side. So there are others, and I'd like you to go seek them out, like me, who have overcome this fear. Maybe you can find an advocate, somebody who will walk this journey with you and help you to accept what is going to be the next best thing for you. And I believe in being transparent. I believe that there definitely is a fear of being on an airplane and not being in control. And I believe that there's a fear of changing places, but I want to help you get over that. So if any of these ideas about changing, practicing, building a skill, overcoming that fear through an advocate or a friend, maybe those are things that can help you out. Today's independent destination. Let's move on. Let's talk about Colorado. USA. The word Colorado means red. And I'm sure that there's a lot of red in Colorado, my favorite color. I've been there several times. My first time was 1975 when I was in high school and I went to Breckenridge, skied. There was only two mountains there. Now there's many more. Beautiful destination. If you live anywhere in the Midwest, you know Colorado is pretty easy to get to by car or by flight. And whether it's summer or winter, you can have a great experience. Some of the best hiking in the world 
I believe you'll find in Colorado. But you can also go on water and you can find some great kayaking and some great whitewater rafting if you're into that kind of adventure. Or if you'd like something a little slower paced, you could always try mini golf or you will take an adventure over to Red Rocks, which is one of the best amphitheaters. It's naturally formed and some wonderful concerts there. I attended Easter sunrise service at Red Rocks. We got up really early. Of course, it was dark and had our sleeping bags with us. We drove out there and it was still dark, but we got seats and just a beautiful service. So uh, non-denominational. So if you have a chance to get there for Easter, that would be a wonderful vacation experience for you. Colorado has a lot of things for a lot of people. It seems like many of my family members have moved there just in the last 10 years. So I think it's a destination. I think a lot of people are really enjoying the outdoors. So when I think of Colorado, I think of being outdoors, whether it's camping or biking or just being in the mountains. There's some really wonderful things to do in Colorado, whether it's in Denver or in some of the other towns nearby. I encourage you to get out there and check out Colorado as an independent destination. Today's mistake. Have you ever looked at your battery and found out that it's empty? That's right. The battery is gone. If you are like me and you need to have energy on your phone or other device, that is a mistake. So I want to point out that I've made this mistake many, many times. It can be critical during a vacation. It can be a huge crisis for you. It can really mess up your communications. You might be stranded. It might actually be dangerous for you. So try to remember, not like I did, to bring a backup, to check the backup, to make sure that all of your batteries are charged up, and then to have a plan in the event that it's not. Maybe there's an airport that you can go to nearby. Usually airports have some great opportunities to charge up, or maybe it's your nearby coffee shop if you can get to one. Let's say you're really, really far away from a charging station. That's why today's portable devices are such a saving grace. So be sure that you check your batteries before you venture out. And cold weather and hot weather can both suck that battery and drain it much faster than you expected. So if you're going to be at extreme temperatures, be sure you have your batteries safely stored so those juices will stay in if you can. We're going to talk about some travel advice, and this is with regards to social media. So if you are a user of social media, as I am, and I've been a user for many years, I want to talk with you about getting safe while you're traveling. One of the tips Dr. Travel Best wants to give you is don't tell people you're gone if there's no one home. So don't go posting on social media that you're away. If there's nobody there, think of home alone and be aware that your address is available to people that are online. It's really easy for them to find out your address if they see that you're on a long trip. So I would encourage you to not post on social media if you're gone. Now let's talk about where do you stay when you travel? Well, that's going to depend on a few things. First of all, how long is your trip and what's your budget? How long are you going for? Are you going for one night, two nights, like a weekend or a long weekend? If you're just going to go on a short trip, then there's lots more options for you. If you're on a long trip, there are fewer options because you're going to be thinking more long-term about where you want to stay. Your budget's going to determine where you stay also. Now, some people, they just bring their travel with them in a motorhome, right? They drive and drive and drive and then they stop and they have their sleeping with them. There's another easy way that young people like to do, and that's couch surfing. So that's an option for the very, very rugged traveler. But for the typical Dr. Travel Best woman, I would like to, first of all, have you consider hotels because you can almost know what the experience is going to be. And if you have a frequent traveler card or a loyalty program, that's an option for you. You can oftentimes get exactly what you need set up for you and have that repeated over and over. If you are traveling with your family, having a hotel might be a good option for you also, especially if the breakfast is included. So that's definitely something to consider. And many of us are now booking 
on the online websites. There's two main ones. There's Expedia and there's Booking.com. Those are really the two main because there's Hotels.com and there's Home Away and those types of programs, but they are generally part of either of those two. You can certainly look online to see what's available at the time of your travel. Now, is there last minute booking opportunities? Oh, of course there are, depending on the seasonality. So if you're going on a holiday weekend, you might not find a last minute deal. But then again, it depends. So go search. Now, I want to talk about things like Airbnb and VBRO. Those are the shared, as they call them, shared economy websites. What is happening is a private party is renting out their space, whether it be a room or even part of a room or a whole house. This is something I've done not only in the United States, but I've done this in several foreign countries. In Japan, I did it in France. I've done it in Costa Rica. I think Airbnb is generally a really good way to go. You can find very affordable one and two night stays. And if you like the place, oftentimes you can book it again. Or if you just want to try out a neighborhood, you know, do some research for a future trip. So I'll be talking about Bangkok and talk about how I found two different Airbnbs in Bangkok. One was the first night we stayed there was, I think, about $25 a night. And the second one was maybe $30 a night. These were beautiful facilities and they each had a rooftop pool and we were the only ones using those. So if you are thinking about Airbnb, I would do that if I was going to Bangkok, if I was going to travel to a new country. I have had some challenges, I must admit. So back to the mistakes in France, we had a a woman who owned the Airbnb who did not speak any English And it was really difficult to understand what her needs were. And I'm afraid that I didn't satisfy her needs because she wanted me out of the unit at 10 o'clock every morning and I couldn't come back until five o'clock at night. So, and I couldn't use the kitchen and those were things that weren't really clear to me. So make sure that you have a full understanding and that you do speak their language. I actually was kind of afraid when I was in her unit. She was a hoarder and she had floor to ceiling stuff in the house. And so uh, I did not write her a good review and she might've written me a bad review too. So there are some things that you might find that are not quite right. But back to uh, Bangkok. So I was there in January and I think that it is a great destination. You can experience a very, very different culture from the United States And you can feel safe walking around. I don't feel that you'll be having trouble, even if you're not on a tour. I think you can find an Airbnb or find a hotel and then experience what the people in Thailand are like. And you can make your trip as adventurous as you choose to. Certainly, Thailand is a large country with so many places to go visit. When I go back next time, I'll definitely go to Phuket and Chiang Mai. But this was my first adventure to Thailand. And so Bangkok was a great destination for three days. One thing that I would definitely do if I was going to Bangkok independently is I would get a massage. So one of the first things that you should do is go out, get yourself a very, very fine massage. You'll spend somewhere under $10 and you will just be so grateful. Your body will thank you. And I hope that uh, you listen again and tell me how your experience was. So thanks for listening to this edition of the World's First Guide to Independent Travel with Dr. Mary Travelbest. If you want to know more, just search for me. And sure enough, you'll find me on the web, social media, and in podcast form. I'm looking for you. So go ahead and let me know what's on your bucket list. What's on your travel bucket list? Tell the doctor and her team of women who travel the world seeking the very best. Dr. Travel Best, that is. 